Hello, my name is Aaron Hennessy, documentation writer for the Amazon Simple Workflow Service, also known as SWF. In this video, I'll show you the basics of programming with the new AWS Flow Framework for Ruby. SWF helps coordinate, operate, and audit work across multiple machines. This helps you focus on the business logic that makes your application unique and not on writing glue code and implementing state machines. The AWS Flow Framework for Ruby is a programming framework that frees you from writing the details of communicating with SWF and allows you to focus instead on the logic of your workflows. It follows many of the programming patterns used in the AWS Flow Framework for Java, but is designed uniquely for the Ruby programming language. The video follows an example that is also present in the documentation, so for the latest written version of this example, see the topic called Getting Started Hello World in the AWS Flow Framework for Ruby documentation. You don't need to write any code to understand the example in this video, but if you want to follow along and execute the example on your own while watching the video, you'll need to first sign up for AWS and install the AWS Flow Framework for Ruby Gems. Because we have limited time, I won't go into the details of how to perform each of the steps here, but you can find detailed information on the AWS website at aws.amazon.com. The traditional application used for introducing programmers to a new language or technology is Hello World. Here it is, in all its glory. We'll use this application as inspiration for the example here. But since Amazon SWF is designed to run workflows that may consist of many activities running on separate computers across the Internet, our example will be a little more interesting than this one. Our Hello World will implement the basic three parts of a flow framework application. A workflow, also known as a decider, that implements the control flow and makes decisions about which activities to run. An activity that performs a specific task, perhaps among many tasks. And a starter, which could be another application that triggers workflow execution. The first thing we need to do when connecting with Amazon Web Services is to provide an access key. The AWS Flow Framework is no different, so we'll create some code that loads in a YAML formatted text file containing our access keys. Substitute your own access key values for the values shown here. We'll call this file aws-config.txt and store it in the same folder as our application. If you don't know how to get your access keys, follow the guide called How Do I Get Security Credentials in the Amazon Web Services General Reference. Since all parts of our program will need the security credentials, for simplicity we'll add the code to a file that can be downloaded by each part. We'll call it utils.rb, and it looks like this. In this file, we first require AWS Decider, which loads the AWS Flow Framework for Ruby. Every workflow needs a domain and a task list, which we define as constants. We start by loading the credentials from our aws-config.txt file. Next, we register our domain with SWF. We save the domain in an instance variable so we can use it in our workflow and activity code.
Next, we'll define the activity that we'll run in a file called hello underscore activity dot rb. First, we include the utils dot rb file we just created so we can access AWS and the values that we declared in that file. Now, we'll create an activity class by extending AWS flow activities. An activity has activity options that can be set. The version string is required. You can use any value here, and it identifies the version of the activity. In this example, we're defining a task list that is used by the AWS Flow Framework to schedule and process tasks, much like a queue. Since we're using the same task list for all of our activities, we'll enter the constant here. We are also setting some timeouts for our activity. In this case, we're limiting the time allowed for the task to stay in the task list before being picked up by a worker to 30 seconds. We are also imposing the same limit on the time allowed for the worker to process the task to completion. Now that we're finished setting the activity options, we'll provide the body of the activity. This represents your business logic. This particular activity prints a pleasant greeting, taking the name as input. We've completed the definition of our activity task. Now we just need an activity worker to run the activity. Finally, we add some code to run the worker when the file is run from the command line. We'll execute each part of the program separately to show that they're all coordinated by Amazon SWF. Next, we'll implement the workflow logic in a file called hello underscore workflow dot rb. Now we'll define a workflow class by extending AWS flow workflows. The workflow is also identified by a version number. Our workflow, which is responsible for controlling the flow and making decisions about which activities to run, also needs to know the name of the task list, which will be used to store its decision tasks. We also set a timeout for the workflow of one hour from start to close. Timeouts are always specified in seconds, so we'll set it to 3600 seconds. Our workflow sets an activity client and copies the settings from Hello World Activity which we defined in hello underscore activity dot rb. Our workflow is rather simple, and just runs the hello activity, passing it the name that is also provided as input to the workflow. Finally, we set up a workflow worker that will start executing the workflow. Again, we add a line of code that allows us to run the file from the command line. We are now finished with both the activity and workflow implementations. Next, we'll create a starter that ties it all together. Create a new file called hello underscore starter dot rb. It looks like this. Now, we'll get a workflow client that will start the workflow execution on Amazon SWF. We then print a message to the console to indicate what's happening and start the workflow execution. The execution passes the string AWS Flow Framework for Ruby to the workflow, which, as we designed, will pass it to the activity and which, in turn, will print the final message to the screen. Let's run it now and see if it works. 
After saving the files, we'll go back to the command line and run the activity, then the workflow, and then the starter. It doesn't really matter whether we start the activity or workflow first, but we want to run them at least once before running the starter. If all goes well, we should see the string Hello AWS Flow Framework for Ruby printed when the activity is finally executed. There it is. Hello world, courtesy of the Amazon Cloud and SWF. To download the AWS Flow Framework for Ruby, the Hello World sample, and more, go to aws.amazon.com slash swf slash flow. For more information about the AWS Flow Framework for Ruby, including many more programming examples and a complete API reference, see the documentation at docs.aws.amazon.com slash Amazon SWF slash latest slash AWS RB Flow Guide.